Hey YouTube. Hey YouTube. Hey YouTube. How's it going YouTube? I've got an awesome project to show you that my dad and I have just completed. I had already made a DIY Euro rack case before, but I was quickly outgrowing it and I wanted to make something a little bigger that would really look good for performance. We used 3 quarter inch MDF for the bottom and the back of the case and used 9U Cheeks of Steel from Synthrotech for the sides. I wanted a little more to the sides, so we traced the shape onto some glitter acrylic, drilled holes to match the cheeks, and then stuck them together with double sided tape. All that was left to do then was cut out a section on one of the sides to put the power socket in. I used three sets of 168 HP rails, also from Synthrotech, making it the widest standalone modular synth that I've ever seen in person. I likely won't go this wide on my next build as it makes patching from one side of the rack to the other a little bit too much of a stretch. My unprofessional opinion is that you shouldn't need to exceed 104 HP and can make up that extra space by building up and going for a 12, 13, or even a 15 U size. After painting the MDF black, screwing the sides in place, and attaching rubber feet to the bottom, we were ready to install the LED panels to the back of the case. I used six LED panels that are all 32 by 64 pixels each, giving me a total resolution of 64 by 192 pixels. These panels use the Hub75 interface, which means each individual pixel has a red, green, blue, and white LED, giving me full color capability. These panels run off a 5 volt power supply and conveniently use the same 16 pin ribbon cables as Eurorack does. Each panel draws a lot of power relatively, almost 4 amps per panel. Six panels using 4 amps each at 5 volts gives us a total potential power consumption of around 120 watts just to power the screen at full brightness. Because of this, I know I needed a power supply that can push out at least 120 watts, and I ended up going with a 200 watt power supply and it's been great. The panels I used are P4 sized, meaning each individual pixel is 4 millimeters in length and height. This is relatively small and geared mainly towards indoor use. Pixel sizing can go as small as 1.9 millimeter pitch, but these panels can get very expensive real quick and you might be better served using an LCD screen for higher definition. These are also 116 scan panels, meaning only a sixteenth of the panel is illuminated at one time. These panels refresh so quickly that the naked eye doesn't notice, but they can look a little shaky when recorded by a camera. I wanted this screen to look like a retro Game Boy screen, so P4 and 1 16th scan was just fine for me. If you want full color though, make sure to avoid single color panels and controllers using the Hub 12 and Hub 08 interface. These will not give you full color capability, but they do tend to be cheaper. Since you can load virtually any type of media onto these controllers, I knew this would be a safe bet to use for this project. The good news is these controllers run pretty cheap, and I was able to get mine off AliExpress for under $15. AliExpress typically doesn't give you much information over the specs of these controllers though. You'll have to do some research to make sure the controller you choose can handle the resolution of the screen you're connecting it to. I actually bought a few controllers that didn't work because they couldn't handle all six panels at the same time. The one drawback here is that I'm currently only able to load a limited number of pictures, GIFs, and text onto the controller, and I don't yet have the capability of controlling the screen during live musical performance. The solution to this is a much pricier LED controller that allows for various inputs like USB, VGA, HDMI, and network cables. I'm still working on a way to have a small Eurorack module that interfaces this stuff for me, so let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or suggestions. I have no idea what I'm doing right there. I've got some links in the description for more info about using these LED panels. Adafruit has a lot of good information on these, especially when wiring them up for Arduino projects. 
Switching power supplies will need to be wired from a power source like a wall plug and then wired to your load. On most switching power supplies, you'll have an array of screws that all need to be wired to specific places. On the far left, you'll typically see an L for live, N for neutral, and a ground symbol. These relate to the wires running from your main power and should be wired up with the black, white, and green wire respectively if you're watching this in the USA or Canada. On the far right, you'll see the various options of output power your supply offers. Running power to the LED panel was simple as it only needed one output voltage of five volts, making it a single rail power supply. Eurorack power supplies are a little bit more complex as they require three rails, positive 12 volts, negative 12 volts, and five volts. Power supplies will typically label these as V1, V2, something like that, and you'll need to double check the voltage output of each rail before hooking it to your powered bus. You can do this by testing each terminal with a voltmeter or referring to the side of the power supply. It should be written pretty explicitly. COM refers to the common terminal, which is where you'll wire the ground wire from your load. I've seen some people wire the COM to the ground terminal as a precaution, but I think this might be only for very high power supplies. I'm not entirely sure about this, so feel free to educate me in the comments. If you see NC above a terminal, this just means no charge and you can leave this rail alone. Eurorack enthusiasts will likely tell you that the linear power supplies are more reliable and less noisy than switching power supplies. And I'm willing to bet that this is true, having never even used a linear supply myself. I still opted for switching power supplies and haven't yet seen any drawbacks. Knowing the power consumption of your modular synth is vital to choosing what type of power supply you'll need, and if you need more than one. Tally up the total power consumption on each rail and make sure your supply exceeds that amperage level. This is easily done by creating your modular synth online at modulargrid.net and getting your power specs from them. You can register there for free and you'll probably learn a lot about modules that you've never even heard of. I cannot speak highly enough of that website. It's great. Once the panels were in place, we attached some double-sided tape to the outside perimeter of the back of the case. Pulling the paper off the semi-transparent plastic sheet was probably the least satisfying thing of this whole project, just because it was so hard to take off. I learned a neat trick from my dad of dog-earing the double-sided tape, lining up the plastic sheet above it, and then removing the tape so that it wouldn't shift and you knew it was going to be right in place when you removed the tape. Once we got the acrylic stuck onto the double-sided tape, we noticed it gave a darker color to the outside perimeter. We had no idea that was going to happen. Luckily, however, we had no problems at all getting the screen to turn on and play GIFs. And with the semi-transparent plastic on top, it turned out even better than I thought it would. Dad found a piece of scrap metal that we bent and painted to cover the open top of the rack. It fit really well and looks like a grill, basically. We knew we weren't done with the back and I had an extra sheet of glitter acrylic that now had a purpose. We then cut out a frame that covered up the darkened part of the semi-transparent plastic to match the sides of the rack. That really did the trick, and the case finally looked complete, ready to dazzle and turn some heads. The last thing left to do was wire up the power distribution boards that the modules would connect to. I decided on attaching these with magnetic feet that I got from AliExpress so they could stay secure in the rack, but also could be removed easily. The power bus boards came from Modular Synth Lab, and I haven't had any problems with them at all. They offer various combos of distribution boards and power supplies so you can power up virtually any size of Modular Synth. Well, that's about all I got for this project. I'm already trying to think of what my next build will be, so I'd love to hear how I can improve on this build. 
or how I can make an even crazier rack next time. This is YouTube after all, so thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to see me make some modular synth stuff with this baby in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Is this all gonna have music in the background or are you gonna be commentating it's, on it? No, it's gonna be your voice just there. Really? Little kids go out and make a snowman, he comes to life. Snowman immediately wants to get them kids married and they say, no man. Well, they say, we're not married yet, but you can do it. Cause we'll pretend to They don't say not yet. He says, are you married? And they say, no, no man. But you can do. But you can do the job. Like marry them when they're in town. I guess. He's looking for people to marry. And you can do that in town. We're not married. If you want to marry somebody, you can go into town and marry them. Because he's a parson. Okay, I don't understand this song. Ready?